In this video, we're going to talk about acceleration when objects are traveling in circular motion. There are three types of acceleration when dealing with objects that are traveling in circles. We have angular acceleration, tangential acceleration, and centripetal acceleration. Angular acceleration uh, is going to be directed uh, kind of out of the middle of the circle. Tangential is tangent to the circle. And then centripetal is going to be pointed uh, directly into the center of the circle. So let's start talking about angular acceleration. Now angular acceleration is really based off of linear acceleration, the acceleration that we know about. So define acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which velocity is changing. So this is the equation for linear acceleration and this delta symbol, this triangle, means the change in and then we have velocity over t. And our angular acceleration looks very similar. Instead of a we use this symbol called alpha, it's a Greek letter, and instead of velocity, linear velocity that is, we have this angular velocity. We use the symbol omega. So we have the change in velocity over time. So it's very similar. Now with omega we use uh, the SI units of radians per second. So that's uh, how we talk about motion in a circle. We use instead of meters per second we use radians because we have something that's traveling in a circle and radians is really measuring the angle at which it's changing. So let's try using this equation to solve a problem. So you spin a globe at 2.5 radians per second and then you give it a push to speed it up to 3 radians per second and it takes 0.2 seconds to change its speed. What is the angular acceleration? Uh, whenever I solve problems, I always like to underline the given information in green and then what the question is actually asking for in red. After I do that, I like to list the equation I'm going to use. So I'm going to solve for angular acceleration, and so it's going to be the change in velocity over time. And then I like to start listing what I know. So I have the initial velocity or speed, the final velocity, and then I have time. So let's go ahead and plug in some of these numbers. I can expand this uh, delta omega to just say omega final minus omega initial. That's what that change in means over t. So let's go ahead and plug in these numbers. And we get an angular acceleration of 2.5 radians per second squared. And so that's angular acceleration. Uh, let's go ahead and look at tangential acceleration now. Tangential acceleration is the acceleration that's going to be directed tangent uh, to the circle. And basically what we do is we base it off of the angular acceleration, and we just multiply the angular acceleration by the radius of the circle. So the radius of the circle um, is going to change the angular motion into a linear version essentially is what it does. So let's go ahead and try uh, doing this. We're actually going to look at the exact same problem that we just looked at, but instead of the angular acceleration we are going to solve for the tangential acceleration here. Now as we look at this equation that we're going to use, I could substitute instead of um, using this symbol we know that the symbol alpha is equal to delta omega over t, so I could say that the tangential acceleration is equal to r times change uh, in velocity over t. So I just substituted that in for uh, the alpha symbol. So let's go ahead and try this. All right, so I have my equation, I have my data. I, I did forget to put in the radius of this globe in the question, but this is the radius of that globe. It's 0 0.35 meters. So let's go ahead and plug in the information into our equation. And so we have our delta omega right here, 3 minus 2.5 times the radius over the time. And so we end up with 0 0.88 meters per second squared. So when we're in tangential acceleration, we use meters instead of radians. So you really just kind of get rid of the radiance and, and leave the meters there. 
So that's tangential acceleration. Let's go to the last one here, which is called centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration always points to the center of the circle. And uh, this is the equation for centripetal acceleration. Uh, I'll show you where this comes from uh, in, a, in a later video, but this is uh, really you have to use calculus to end up with this. Um, so I'll save it for that. For now, that's the equation we use for centripetal acceleration. And just to show you how it's going to point into the center, uh, delta V, that's what acceleration is based off of, is always V final minus V initial. And so I just drew in here two tangential uh, velocities here. So centripetal acceleration is, is based off of tangential velocity. So it's not angular velocity. That's why it's the V here for tangential velocity. Angular velocity uses that omega symbol. So if I were to do the final velocity here, which is this one, and subtract from that the initial velocity, we would do vector uh, addition here. And what we would do is we would flip this initial velocity around. So this would be our basically the negative velocity initial vector. That's what it would look like. And that's what we would do. We would add this one to this one over here. So if I do that and I put this on here like that, so that's our negative version, and we draw in the delta v, uh, we can see that it points into the center of the circle. It's not perfect because my drawing is not that good, but you can get the idea here. So let's go ahead and try this one. So a plane propeller is spinning at 350 meters per second. The spinning propeller spins with a radius of 3.5 meters. What is the centripetal acceleration uh, of the tips of the propeller blades? Now one other thing to note here, I've, I've put in my equation and put in my data, but I just wanted to mention that centripetal acceleration is based on motion that is uniform, uh, circular motion, and so the speed isn't changing. And if you notice with this problem, the speed never changes. The propeller is always moving at 350 meters per second. But as it moves around in circular motion, although the magnitude of that speed doesn't change, the direction is always changing. So if we're to freeze frame it at any point, we're always going to get a new direction constantly as it moves around. So that's why we do have changing velocity here, because the direction is changing. And so let's go ahead and plug in these numbers. And so we end up with a centripetal acceleration of 35,000 meters per second squared. And so there is our centripetal acceleration. And that is acceleration for objects that are traveling in circular motion.